Welcome to We Are Soccer, the show that talks about pro soccer, youth soccer, and everything in between. I'm Craig Hearn. All right, before we jump in, a quick note on today's show. Some bad language might be involved. So if that's not your thing, go ahead and skip ahead to the next video. All right, fun stuff to talk about today, kids. We've got Manchester United players are unhappy with Ralph Rangnick and Ted Lasso. I mean, Chris Armis. We'll explain that one shortly. Brooks Lambeer and I talk about Shakiri joining the Chicago Fire and the potential impact he could have on the MLS. And how much did kicking a cat actually cost Kurt Zuma? We'll tell you our thoughts. And Robert Lewandowski wants to go where this summer? Yep, the rumors are already flying. Yep, there's lots to get to today on today's show, so let's go. All right, kids, welcome to We Are Soccer. We're going to talk some world soccer news. This segment of the show is brought to you by Krosky and Lonnie. Krosky and Lonnie specializes in working with small and medium-sized privately held companies, nonprofit enterprises, educational associations, professional partnerships and families, and is dedicated to helping you achieve the highest levels of financial understanding and prosperity. Please visit them at KroskyLani.com to find out how their team of talented professionals can help you and your organization in 2022. Big shout out to Krosky and Lani as they have a soccer team over at Total Soccer of Novi here in Metro Detroit. Krosky Lani soccer team won 6-2 this past week. First game ever that they've played and they killed their opponents. Well done, Krosky and Lani. Big shout out to Steve Shield, player of the match. I believe he had a hat trick and takes home the game ball. So congratulations. Also, Total Soccer of Novi in Metro Detroit. Great place to play, great facility, great staff. If you haven't played there and you're in Metro Detroit, look them up. I highly, highly recommend them. Okay, on to some soccer news. Manchester United stars are unhappy with the old-fashioned training that their coaches have put out for them. And they're calling Chris Armas, the American coach, the former Toronto FC head coach, Ted Lasso. There's been bemusement that Ralph Rangnick left the bulk of the coaching sessions to assistant Chris Armas. Sources have said that some players on the training ground have jokingly likened Armas to fictional soccer coach Ted Lasso. The hapless American parachuted into managed fictional side AFC Richmond in the hit, uh, uh, excuse me, Apple Plus comedy show. I mean, that's a little silly. I mean, whatever. Former United States International Armist had never coached outside of North America before, landing the job as Ralph Rangnick's number two. Everybody was a little surprised at this. Let's be honest. We were very surprised that Armist got this job. But as Americans, we thought this is great. We're moving up in the world. Apparently, it's not working out so well. Despite the players' misgivings, the increased organizational work brought in under Rangnick has paid off with United conceding nine goals in 12 matches. So their, their defense has tightened up. They haven't scored very many goals. This past week, they tied Burnley 1-1. The week before, they lost to Middlesbrough in the FA Cup. Uh, it, it's not good enough on the offensive side. When you've got players like Rashford, Cavani, Ronaldo, uh, Fernandez, Lingard, for, I mean, for Christ's sake, come on. It's got to be better. It has to be better. I do put it down to the system that they are playing. 4-2-2-2-2, two, 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 whatever the hell it is, isn't going to cut it in the premiership. I, I tell you what, Manchester United are in some trouble. 
I do not think that Ralph Rangnick is the guy. I was convinced that he was the guy when he got there a couple of months back after doing all the reading and seeing the tree that he had essentially started and all the coaches who taught under him and where those coaches are now. I thought Ralph Rangnick is going to bring some stability to Manchester United. He's going to be able to bring in a nice head coach to run the system. He's going to change that organization around. I tell you what, with three months into his tenure there, and it has been terrible. He cannot get those players on staff right now to perform. It is, it's crazy. I'm sorry. I've watched all those Man United games. They have looked poor, very poor, unorganized. And I think that's down to the coaching sessions, the training sessions that they do to midweek. Those players don't know what to do. They get flustered. And against in that Burnley match this past week, Burnley were overrunning Man United in the midfield. You've got a midfield of Paul Pogba and Bruno Fernandez, and you're getting overrun by Burnley? Burnley. Not acceptable for Man United. All right. Definitely needs to, needs to have a lot happen there. Um, we do want to say in contrast, Manchester United shipped 24 goals in under under goal or so un, under, excuse me, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's final 12 matches. So again, the defense has tightened up. He's Ralph Rangley has been able to shore up that defense. They haven't been letting in a lot of goals. I think the defense has been better, but I know that David De Gea has been really better. That guy has been standing on his head. If it wasn't for him, Burnley would have won that game this past week on Tuesday. Ralph Rangnick, he can get it done over on the mainstay of Europe in the mainland. He can't seem to get it done in England on a cold, rainy night in Burnley on Tuesday. I'm sorry. It's, uh, it's kind of funny. That's the old cliche, right? We always say it about players. Can they get it done at Burnley on Tuesday night in the rain? Well, Ralph Rangnick didn't get it done. They were up one nothing. They couldn't hold on. They should have lost that game. De Gea saved their asses as he's done for a lot of this year. Uh, he's been the star man for me. De Gea has been the MVP of that club so far. It was uh, Ronaldo scoring all those goals at the beginning of the year, but he's gone dry. He hasn't scored in six games, I believe. That's one of the longest streaks he's had in his career of no scoring. Uh, he needs to come. Again, he hasn't been starting some games. He has come off the bench, and he did have a small injury. I get that. But Ronaldo does not look like Ronaldo when the, when the season started. It's a completely different player at the moment, which is unfortunate. We'll see if they can turn that round. All right. Well, if you haven't seen the news of Kurt Zuma, West Ham player, former Chelsea player, kicking his cat this past week that came out on social media, um, good for you. It's been everywhere. It's disgusting. There's no need for him to be doing that. God knows why his brother is filming it and then posting it on TikTok. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. West Ham fined him 250,000 pounds for that, which is equivalent to $340,000. That's two weeks wages. He was fined two weeks wages, $340,000. He still played in that game the next night, even after that came out. He was not sacked, as a lot of people were calling for. He then was dropped by his sponsor, Adidas. Adidas said, we're done. You cannot do that. All right, so he's lost a sponsorship. He's lost $340,000 because of two weeks' wages lost. What else? I'm sure if he has any other sponsorships, they are going to be dropping him. His animals were taken away from him, and rightly so. But more importantly, he may have just lost his spot on the French World Cup team. Here is what his head coach, the French head coach the Didier Deschamps had to say I was very surprised on Kurt's part it is unacceptable intolerable cruelty without name these images are shocking and intolerable and he will be dropped for our next World Cup qualifying uh, games so he's dropping him he's not going to be in the squad for the next three games in March good absolutely and you can guarantee there's another player who's going to step in and probably take his spot. Kurt Zuma just cost himself a, tr a trip to Qatar 2022. He's not going. I guarantee he will not be in guitar at Qatar for the World Cup of the French national team. All because you are a stupid idiot and wanted to fucking kick a cat and then have your brother record it. And then he posts it. Absolutely insane. 
from both of you, both Zumas. Good Lord, one, what are you doing? It's a poor defenseless animal. What the fuck are you doing kicking a cat? You're a professional fucking soccer player. Be smarter than that. That's just cruel. And then your brother's filming the damn thing? Good Lord. I, I, I mean, I don't even know what to say about that. It's just off the charts nuts. We know social media can ruin things. Uh, we know uh, it can get out of hand, but it, that's just silly. Now, the other side of it is we have seen soccer players, footballers, athletes, professional athletes, celebrities do a lot more than kick a cat and get a lot less punishment. I get it. I absolutely get it. But in this day and age, it's 2022. You can't do stuff like that, man. You can't kick a poor defenseless little animal and, and, and think that everything's going to be okay. You can't do that. So I see both sides. No, he shouldn't be sacked from his job. Yes, he should be fined. Yes, he should be dropped from sponsorships. And he should not have started that game. The very next day by West Ham. It is what it is. It happened. David Moyes made that decision and said, I wanna, I'm dealing with the football side of things. I'll let the, the other folks in the club deal with the other side of things. I get that, but the buck stops at you, David Moyes. So shame on you for letting him, Kurt Zuma, play and putting him in the starting lineup in that game. Uh, speaking of violence, I want to get to something else real quick. Uh, on, on Sunday, so uh, six days ago, uh, live on BB BBC television, 19-year-old Leicester City fan, a, excuse me, a 19-year-old Leicester City fan climbed over the advertising boardings at Nottingham Forest City Ground and started swinging punches at three Nottingham Forest players while they celebrated scoring a goal in their 4-1 triumph over Leicester City. Uh, this past Tuesday, that young man was charged with three counts of assault and going onto the pitch and will be back in front of the magistrate in court later this month. This has got to stop. This shit has got to stop. If you haven't seen this video, go ahead and watch it. The Nottingham Forest players score a goal and they're celebrating. They're not doing anything wrong, celebrating. And this fucking idiot from Leicester City jumps over the boards and starts swinging punches at those players. They're absolutely out of control. This shit has got to stop. If it continues, there's going to be fences put up around the stadium, around uh, the field. And that's just going to ruin the game altogether. Why do people think that they can enter a pitch and start doing stuff like that? You're going to jail. You're going to get fined. Now what we need to do is we need to start putting these people in jail for a lot longer. If you remember, I believe it was three years ago now, Jack Grealish was playing for Aston Villa at Birmingham City. The ball went out for a corner kick. Jack turns his back and starts walking into the box. And some idiot from Birmingham City runs onto the field and takes a jab at him, getting him around the back of the head. Could have hurt him really bad. Thank goodness other players stepped in and stopped the fucking idiot. That guy was put in jail for nine months. Nine months for entering a football pitch and swinging at a professional football player. Not long enough. I guarantee that guy's put into jail for years. This past week, doesn't happen with this 19-year-old Leicester City fan going on to Nottingham Forest Field. We need to make an example of these idiots, right? Make an example. This 19-year-old fan needs to go in front of the magistrate. He needs to remonstrate him and put him in jail for years, several years, because you know what's going to happen next? Anybody want to say Monica Sellis? Remember that? Tennis player sitting there? and she got stabbed in the back by someone who ran under the court? Come on, we can't have that be happening again. We have got to start to stop this shit. It is absolutely crucial to stop it now. Absolutely crucial. This is getting out of hand. We've seen other things happen. We've seen people throw coins. We've seen bottles being thrown. That's stupid as well, absolutely. But there's a difference between that and running under the pitch and swinging or stabbing people. And that's what's coming. We need to start, we need to start putting these people in jail for years not months. All right. Come on now. Let's, let's be better as fans. Um, we teased it at the front, Robert Lewandowski. Rumors have come out recently uh, that Robert Lewandowski has said he would like to play in Spain next year and would like to sign with Real Madrid. 
that's kind of he's kind of just if it, it's rumors i don't believe that he has come out and and said that i haven't read anything that he said it but internally it, it's being spoken about and there are rumors from credible sources so we're not just pulling this out of thin air or some bullshit website uh credible sources real have apparently uh heard this and are willing to go this summer and get him uh, it also, if you'll, you'll remember, Real Madrid have recently signed a contract with in Kylian Mbappe for more than 650,000 euros a week. Now they're going to go ahead and sign Robert Lewandowski. I, I don't know if this is going to happen. I don't know if, he, if Robert Lewandowski will head to Real Madrid. Um, where does he fit in there? Obviously, there's um, Benzema, who's there right now. Vinicius Jr.'s there. Then obviously Kylian Mbappe is going to be there. He signed a, a contract to, to head there this summer. Can you imagine all four of those guys there? There's someone's going to have to be sitting on the bench. Two of those guys are going to be sitting on the bench. It's that's going to be nutty, absolutely nutty. I don't know if he'll go. He's 34. His family's settled. He has said he loves Bayern Munich. He loves the city. He loves living there. His kids are in school. I I, I have a feeling this is some sort of tactic for him to get another contract. With Bayern Munich, he may just be putting it out there, some rumblings, in order for Bayern to give him a better, a longer contract. I don't know. We will see. But this summer, surely, surely there's going to be some big transfers happening. Well, Holland, Mbappe, maybe Lewandowski. Uh, that's just the name. That's just the th some of the three biggest players there. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff going to happen. So. Oh, uh, last thing on that whole uh, topic, Kareem Benzema just signed a long-term contract uh, with Real Madrid. So he ain't going anywhere, but you'll be damn right. He'll be pissed off if uh, Lewandowski comes into that club because um, his playing time is going to go down. So interesting, very interesting there on, on Robert Lewandowski. We will see what happens. We'll keep you updated as we see that. All right, big games coming up this weekend in the premiership um saturday morning we've got man united southampton brentford versus crystal palace everton leads watford brighton versus brighton and hove albion norwich and man city that man united southampton game um that could be a banana skin for united as we said the way they've been playing their, their players are unhappy with the training sessions they are all over the place on the field they look out of shape to be honest southampton coming off a nice victory against Tottenham they've been playing well as of late that could be a banana skin for Man United and I tell you what Southampton win that game whoo, the pressure is going to be on Ralph Rangnick and his staff and that whole squad that's going to be fun to watch so good luck there uh, Everton leads that promises to be a good one as well Everton new under uh, Frank Lampard he brought in Deli Ali uh, Donny Vanderbeek I think, I think he's going to get Everton humming along. But Leeds played very well this past uh, in the middle of this past week against Villa at Villa Park. So that's going to be a fun game, back and forth. Both those managers like to run at it and run at it and go. So that, that's going to be fun to watch. Keep your eyes on that one. It's a 10 a.m. kickoff. Watford, uh, Brighton, Hove Albion. Uh, sorry, that's going to be, in my opinion, probably a, a snore fest, and I won't watch that one. Norwich, uh, Man City. Yeah, Man City going to run all over that one. Match of the day was postponed, unfortunately, Chelsea and Arsenal because Chelsea are out in uh, Dubai doing the uh, uh, Club World Cup. Sunday's matchups, Burnley and Liverpool. Could be a tough one. Burnley coming off that 1-1 draw with Man United. Liverpool playing well. I believe Mane and Salah could be back in contention. Whether they start, we'll see. Uh, after they come back from African Cup of Nations, uh, congratulations to Sadio Mane there beating Egypt and... Uh, most solid there um so that's going to be an interesting game then we got what i think is going to be the game of the weekend is newcastle villa villa go up to newcastle that's gonna be tough newcastle coming off a victory there they got three points villa coming off their three three draw with leeds villa gonna be missing as Kansa as he picked up red card in that leeds match villa looking to really get into stride here they've 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 scoring goals Coutinho's playing well he scored two goals in uh, three matches he's got some assists under his belt he's doing really well for Villa it's fun to watch him play if you guys put some eyes on this let me know what you think of Coutinho and how he plays 
Newcastle, Kieran Trippier putting free kicks in the back of the net and doing what he's been bought to do. They are moving up the chart. They're out of relegation zone. Um, we'll see. They're going to want three points from Villa here. I think this one could go back and forth. And unfortunately for Villa, I think this is going to be a draw. Um, Villa should win, but they, they need a win, but it's probably going to be a draw. Tottenham and Wolverhampton. Uh, Wolves coming off a 1-0 loss to Arsenal. Tottenham coming off a 3-2 loss to Southampton. Um, it's probably going to be a snore fest, to be honest. Probably 1-0 can go either way, or it'll be a 1-1 draw. I'll probably put money on it, but a draw. Wolves typically win games 1-0 or lose games 1-0. Uh, they seem to be one nothing specialists on both sides. Leicester City and West Ham face off. Um, that's going to be a good game. West Ham trying to remain in fourth position there. It, it could be interesting to see how they do against Leicester City. Leicester City uh, going through a little bit of a struggle. And then Tuesday, Man United, Brighton Hove Albion. Man United at home there at Old Trafford. Uh, it's a 3.15 Eastern kickoff. That'll be an interesting game. I'm also looking forward to the Bundesliga games that are coming up this weekend. Uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach versus FC Augsburg. Ein Eintracht Frankfurt versus Wolfsburg. Freiburg Mainz. Goethe Firth versus Hertha Berlin. Bochum versus Bayern Munich. Bayer Leverkusen versus Stuttgart. Nate and his Stuttgart seem to have slipped into relegation contention. It's unfortunate. Uh, both Nate and I kind of tipped... Stuttgart to finish in the top half of the table and maybe contend for Europe this year. Unfortunately, they have dropped way down into 18th. They are in trouble right now. They are in real trouble. Stuttgart need points. Bayer Leverkusen have been scoring goals, been doing very well. They're up top. Um, that, that I Unfortunately, sorry, Nate, but I think Bayer Leverkusen take all three points here. Uh, that's a 12-30 Eastern time kickoff on ESPN plus and remember all Bundesliga games on ESPN plus go ahead and give those a watch. Trust me. They're fun to watch. There's a lot of Americans now in the, in the Bundesliga. It's interesting. Very interesting. Love watching those American kids go over and play in the Bundesliga on Sunday in the Bundesliga. We got FC union Berlin versus Borussia Dortmund and then Hoffenheim versus Armenia Bielfeld. Uh, that Berlin versus Dortmund game, 9.30 ESPN plus, 9.30 uh, Eastern time. Borussia Dortmund humming along. They're doing really well. Still in second spot in the Bundesliga right now. Jude Bellingham playing, Bellingham playing well. Holland playing well. Gio Reyna's back. Gio Reyna has got back he, from his uh, hamstring and thigh injury. Looks like he's been training for uh, two or three weeks now. Back in contention. Hopefully he gets to start. We've got to get him healthy. Three World Cup qualifying games to so the U.S. men's team coming up at the end of March. So that gives us about four, five weeks to get Gio Reyna back playing well. And let's get him playing well for Bruce Dorman and back into the squad for the U.S. men's national team. I think we missed him during this previous window. Uh, he can be a game changer. Very good player. Remember, he's only, I think he's only 19, maybe still 18. Uh, great player. Got a lot of learning to do, but a very very good player in my opinion all right guys why don't we watch a snippet of this week's mls roundup where brooks lambier and i chat about shakiri joining the chicago fire and tiago almeida joining atlanta united as the most expensive incoming mls transfer 16 million dollars is what atlanta united paid for tiago almeida there is a small issue with bringing that 20 year old in the sexual assault case that's out there. He's been cleared of charges. No charges will be brought against him, but there's still where there's smoke, there's fire. Brooks and I chat about that during our MLS roundup. Go ahead and watch a small snippet of that. Welcome to MLS Roundup from We Are Soccer. I'm Craig Hearn, and I'm joined, as usual, by soccer syndicate scout Brooks Lambeer. Today, we're going to chat about some of the moves that have been happening around the MLS and get Brooks' thoughts on some of the transactions, some of the players that are coming in, and some of the players that are going out. All right, Brooks, how you doing, buddy? You been all right? Yeah, I'm good. Nice warm day today, right? 40 degrees in Michigan, so can't complain. <laughs> yeah, man, it's, it's crazy. Uh, it was like 12 the other day and I was shivering um, <laughs> only in Michigan, man, only in Michigan. All right. A yeah. lot of, a lot of big moves been happening in MLS. I tell you what, the one that's there's, there's two, two big ones that have stuck 
uh, stuck with me in the last couple of days here. I want to talk about uh, from Leon all the way to Chicago Fire, Ziran Shakiri, 7.5 million officially uh, what they paid for him. I, I think it's a, I think it's a hell of a deal. I think it's a great deal. He's 30 years old. He's got a hundred caps for Switzerland. I think they're getting a great player who's going to come and light it up in the MLS. What's your thoughts, buddy? For a player of his caliber, uh, seven and a half million. And then, you know, you mentioned some other numbers, you know, the transfer fee and, and such. Uh, I think that's a pretty good deal. If you kind of, if you look at a lot of the past deals with uh, mainly Atlanta United's had a lot of those huge deals with the South American market, mm -hmm. um, you know, with some guys like Pity Martinez and Ezekiel Barco. And um, uh, there's a f one or two other ones. I think like the top five or six, like Atlanta United was three or four of the spots. I know the Brenner guy from Cincy was on there and there was one other player, I think, mm. outside of Atlanta um, that was on that like biggest transfer move. But uh, Shakir, yeah, for, for 7.5 million. I mean, you get an experienced guy, you get a guy that, as we kind of talked about last week, he's very versatile in how he can play. He can play as a natural winger. Uh, you can play, he can kind of play as, um, like a second 10 almost if anyone's watched him with Switzerland, uh, you know, they let him roam around and do as he pleases. And, you know, I think that's something that Chicago, you know, wouldn't mind him doing, uh, there are, there are, there are rumors that Chicago were looking at a young 19 year old Mexican, uh, league MX player to sign as well as another winger. So you could see, which is not surprising. You could see three foreign guys playing up top for, for uh, Chicago and Shaboko Shakiri and this young 19 year old, the MX player that they want to sign. Um, I don't know if he's a Mexican, uh, international or if he's from South America, that's very common for a lot of South American players to go play in league MX. So it's a good deal. Uh, and again, if they can get the players around him and they can find the system to get Shakiri the ball and that those three guys up front can, can, uh, you know, create and, and combine and get behind and, and pull, pull defenders out, um, and be creative. I think it's good. And then if you have the outside backs getting forward, this could be a very different Chicago fire team that we're, uh, we're not really have been used to seeing in the past, you know, three or four years. So. Yeah, look, look at you coming with all the rumors here. So they're going to be signing some young 19-year-old. Oh, man. Oh, I've been talking to some of your people, huh? All right. I see. <laughs> look at you. getting We're getting the inside scoop here on We Are Soccer. Um, the, uh, the other big deal, as I mentioned, um, the transfer record fee in the MLS was broken today officially by Atlanta United signing Diego Almeida from um from from the south america um uh, from, from i don't even know who they came from who he came from I, I was reading about it earlier i can't remember now but there's a lot of there's a lot of controversy surrounding uh his his official transfer so i think i think it was 16 million officially he joins you you know atlanta united uh what are your thoughts on the move what are your thoughts on uh give us some insight into how atlanta united make these deals happen yeah. Um, I mean, last year they wanted, this was the name that they wanted last year of the sexual assaults, uh, you know, allegations were going around. Uh, it sounded like that they just wanted to hold off on it. And obviously they they continued to work the deal, you know, as the, as you know, the off season went on. Um, so they have, you know, uh, they have a, you know, a 19, 20 year old guy they can bring in from South America. Uh, and a lot of these deals, you know, that Atlanta are doing are the young DP deals. So um, for those who don't know, when David Beckham officially came over, um, you know, he kind of started, it wasn't called the DP rule at that time, the designated player rule, you know, it was kind of, they call him the David Beckham rule. Uh, and then it kind of morphed into this DP slots. You get so many, um, you get three. Um, and then it kind of morphed into that as MLS encouraged uh, MLS teams to go buy young international players. So Atlanta's done that with Ezekiel Barco. Um, I don't think Pedy Martinez was of that. I think he was a little older, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think he was in his, or he was just at the end of the young DP stage. It's 22 and under for that. Um, but uh, Ama, Tiago, well, the new guy they just signed now for that record transfer fee, Tiago Amato, Tiago Amato will uh, will hit that since he's 20 years old. So you get incentives for it. The league, you know, um, I'm not, I, I can't remember what exactly the incentives were, but they do incentivize if we can bring in young up and coming players, and then teams can sell them on. You know, like Miguel Amaron is a good one, for example. Sure. 
They bring bring in Miguel Amaron. He does very well. He gets scouted by Newcastle, goes to Newcastle, and you know he's been so so there. Too much of a jump for him, but you know as an incentive, it was good for the league. So uh, yeah, so from that perspective, you know that's why Atlanta United does it. And if you kind of look around the league, South America tends to be a very big hotspot for a lot of teams. There's a lot of teams that have international scouts there. You know they scout the Argent Argentinian league, Chilean. Argentina, Chile, Paraguay. All right. Hopefully you enjoyed that little snippet of the video that Brooks and I did. Uh, the full length video can be found on Facebook or YouTube in We Are Soccer's channels. Um, we, t- we, go, we go in depth about some other things on that uh, MLS roundup. So be sure to go ahead and give it a watch. We'd appreciate it. All right. This week, FIFA rankings came out and people got kind of upset. Um, I'm not sure why you guys put so much stock in these FIFA rankings because they're bullshit. We all know they're bullshit. Um, FIFA uses their own little algorithm, uses their own little ranking garbage to figure out this main ranking for the teams. And it, it's, it's garbage. Uh, mainly what had people up in arms was Mexico are ranked 12th, USA are ranked 13th, and Canada, who currently head up CONCACAF uh, in first position, are ranked 33rd. That is Canada's highest ever ranking. So... If you're keeping track, Canada are one, USA are two, Mexico are three, but in the FIFA rankings, Mexico's higher than the US and the US is higher than Canada. Okay, now it's FIFA. They do take into account several years of uh, games previously. They take into account other things that they probably shouldn't. But, I mean, Canada, Canada's played really well. I really like what they've been doing. Obviously, number one, they are almost guaranteed to qualify. So is USA and Mexico. There's still work to be done there, though. But, guys, there's no need to get upset about it, all right? Let, it doesn't matter where, where these clubs are – sorry, where these nations are ranked in the FIFA rankings. No one gives a shit. No one cares. Don't pay attention to it, all right? It's, uh, it's interesting how people just kind of go off on that stuff. All right, big news here in Metro Detroit, Detroit. Detroit City FC are due to kick off their season in USL Championship in early March. Their first game is March 12th down in San Antonio. If you are around town, go ahead and get down to the Detroit City Clubhouse as there'll be a watch party going on. Should be a lot of fun. The games will be on TV. The beer will be flowing and the pies will be spinning. Detroit City FC's first game March 12th in San Antonio. So unless you're going, get down to the clubhouse to watch that. The first home game is a week from then. It's March 19th. Get out to Keyworth Stadium. It will be fun to watch. News broke today. More news for Detroit City FC. The U.S. Open, U.S. Soccer Open Cup Committee released the field of, of the 107th edition of the United States National Championship in January with the first round set to kick off in March. 22. Detroit City FC will host Michigan Stars FC at Keyword Stadium in Hamtramck in the second round of the 2022 Lamar Hunt US Open Cup. Date, time for this fi- and time for this fixture will, will be released at a later date. Um, this is kind of an in-state rivalry. Michigan Stars, Detroit City FC, both fan bases do not like each other. Uh, I don't think the owners very much like each other. This will be a fun game to watch. Obviously, Detroit City FC have made the big jump, as we talked about, to USLC. That is one level below MLS, if you're keeping track. I think the Michigan Stars have made a jump up in levels as well, but not to quite the level that Detroit City has. Um, One or two players have jumped ship from Michigan uh, Stars to Detroit City as they are now higher divisions. Uh, So that's going to be interesting. Last time they played uh, was this past summer in the NISA League. Um, I believe it was a one nothing victory for Detroit City FC. It could have been a lot more. Kind of Mi- Michigan Stars didn't put up much of a fight, if I'm being honest. Uh, their goalie made some pretty good saves on Detroit City's uh, counterattack. And, and, and um, yeah, it, it, was, it was a good game. It lacked what I was hoping. I hope this game in the U.S. Open Cup can bring a little bit more fire and passion than that. And with the players that DCFC are signing, I think it will. Uh, they're going to be they're going to be pretty good this year. All right, uh, do us a favor. If you're a player or a coach or just someone who takes videos of soccer, go ahead and tag us on Twitter and Instagram. We are soccer 
find us, tag us. We love to share content. If you've got game videos, training videos, videos of anything that involves soccer, uh, or if you are committing to a college, please tag us. We'd love to share it. We love sharing that, uh, that content and that information. Um, remember, lots of clubs, coaches, and players do follow us. So we're happy to share your content for you and get more views on your little videos and your training clips. So go ahead and tag us or um, put us a, give us a mention and we will share that for you. Youth soccer really quick. Um, we mentioned this last week, but I think it's worth mentioning again. Uh, I know a lot of players are very dedicated to playing, um, but are they dedicated away from their practices and games? What are they doing when they're not practicing or playing in a game? Are they at home kicking a ball against a wall? Are they going outside and finding an open area, uh, open garage, open driveway, finding how to keep touches on a ball will make you better. A lot of kids these days, don't do that. Just 10 or 15 minutes a day with a wall and a ball or a friend and a ball, trust me, your touch will get better. Your composure on a ball will get better. The more soccer you play, the more times you have the ball on your foot, the better you are going to be. Kids, get outside. And if it's snowing like it is here in Metro Detroit, where I'm at, get in a basement. Get in a basement, find a wall, find a friend, find a brother kick a ball back and forth. That's it. 10, 15 minutes a day, you are going to get better. All right, little training tip. If you want to build up the muscles in your legs, highly recommend buying a jump rope. Jump rope for five to 10 minutes a day, you will be dripping with sweat and your muscles in your ankles and your legs will be burning. Do that for a week. Five minutes a day, for a week and you will build up those muscles and I guarantee you're gonna improve your speed. All right, little training tip, it's what I used to do. Jump rope for five to 10 minutes a day for a week or two and you will see a difference in training and in the games, trust me. Uh, also, one other thing, watch soccer. Not a lot of you kids are watching soccer these days. You're watching the highlights. You know, you go to YouTube and you watch 10 minutes or an hour and 10 minutes of highlights. You watch Ronaldo scoring goals. You watch Ronaldo and Messi um, crossing a ball or dicing people. That's, that's all well and good, but sit down and watch a full game. I mean, as I said earlier, there's Bundesliga games on ESPN+. Peacock and USA and NBC own the rights to the English Premier League. Watch those 90-minute games. That is how you're going to understand the game. You're going to see how players move. If you're a right midfielder, Go ahead and watch how the right midfielder works. See how what he does when he doesn't have the ball. See how hard he gets up and down the field. If you're a forward, watch the forwards. Watch how they make runs. Watch how they arc their run. Watch how they make the run in front of the defender or behind the defender. Watch how they check to the ball when his teammate has the ball, right? It's the little things that are going to help you like that. If you watch games, you will pick up these little tricks that you will then be able to transition into your own game. I don't see enough kids these days watching soccer. Watch games. Here's another little tip. Pick a team. Pick any team. As you can see, Aston Villa is my team. That's the team I support. I watch every single one of their games. can tell you all the players. can tell you they're the best traits of the players. I watch the games. Pick a team. Watch their games. And understand how they move. Watch a specific player. Watch the player that plays in your position. Watch the runs they make. Watch the things they do. Even if they're playing poorly, you're going to learn, okay? So please, watch soccer. Get outside and play soccer. Jump rope. You are going to be better for it. All right, kids. Hope you enjoyed today's session. Uh, our little show here, We Are Soccer. We, we loved having you with us. Go ahead and give some of our other videos of you as well. If you've got questions or, or anything or you want to put some put something in the comments. We'll answer them. We love comments. Please, if you can, do us a huge favor. Give this video a like and share it. We'd very much appreciate it. All right? Until next week, kids. Cheers.